All right, so what we'll do this morning, we'll, um, we'll just go for a quick trot around the surf club, get warm, warmed up, and then we'll uh, come here do a bodyweight circuit for uh, probably 10, 15 minutes and then in and out of the water. All right, but we can go to the pub, and I, I, I've gone to the pub with my friends, and, and I've spent four or five hours with a mate, and I'd get home, and my wife would say, how's Mick? And I'd say, <laughs> I don't know. We just talked about sport. My wife would go for a coffee for 20 minutes with a friend. She'd come back and tell me her life story. We're, we're just not great at sharing. I won't be doing it today. I've my knee playing soccer on Sunday, so I'll be shouting at you. All right, let's go. What I find really disheartening since we've started Dublin now is the fact that there's six million people in Sydney and you can be alone. I know. And it's, it's really something that drives me now to connect me in. WNO is not an exercise group. It's a, it's a group of just trying to connect me. Yes. But, and, and we feed them the broccoli without them, without them understanding they're eating the broccoli. And what I mean is we do exercise and they feel good. Obviously, we know the, the results of doing exercise and how good it is for your mental state. But these guys come down, they do some exercise, we get in the water, we have a share. We always do the, the purpose, why we come down, we do 60 push-ups for the 60 men that commit suicide around the world every hour. Yep. And then we talk about it, which brings us back to our why, but it's the connected piece and having the coffee and the stories that, and the shares that you get from men that are really driving me and driving David and I to, to, to make this. It's so simple. Yeah. Come down, do some exercise, get in the water, have a coffee, have a chat, and that's it. Let's go! Obviously, COVID was a pretty average time for all of us, and, and you were working as an assistant coach with the Swans. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, it was probably back to where the whole thing started. Um, it was the first time, really, of a young family, a young man, and I'd lost my job during COVID. You know, my ego took a hit. Um, I didn't want to go outside. I knew people every, every time I met someone who said, oh, are you OK? And, you know, it was, it was, it was a bit about poor me. And I, I had kind of had that mantra in my head and I didn't want to go outside the front door of the house. And mm. it led me to a pretty dark place mentally. It was very challenging for my wife and my kids. Um, but I certainly just, it was true, a friend of mine, David, said, just, let's, do you want to just catch up, man? How are you going? He just checked in with me, really. The role I played was the role of a friend, I think. I could see that Tag was going through some challenges, as was I. So it was more just to reach out to a friend, say, should we go down the beach, do a little bit of training, have a coffee and continue the conversation? I, really, I said no a couple of times, and he ended up just basically knocking on the door and dragging... <laughs> you like friends like that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Dragging me out of the door and said, come on, man. And so we went for a walk and had a coffee, and he said, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? And we did some exercise, and, and then we kind of the programme started from, oh, I'm feeling like this, and what you've done in the shift in me mentally from just having a chat and doing some exercise, I said, OK, next week, let's invite a friend down. You invite someone, and I'll invite someone. And it just yeah. grew organically from that. Holland. Doyle the tap to Jude Bolton to Canelli. Here come the Swans. Ty Canelli's had one bounce. He runs to 55. He loads up. Ty Canelli has kicked the beauty. The origins of W and I are from what I've seen is we idolise the sportsmen that are on their TV screens on a Friday night and Saturday night, and we see them as being bulletproof and faultless. Uh, when somebody like Ty comes down and openly shares his story about what he's going through in life, positive and negative, and just the everyday struggles and joys of life, that gives everybody else permission to speak. So it, it just, I think it just takes a few brave men to be able to stand up, say, you know what, I'm going to drop my body armour, I'm going to be vulnerable and share my story. That resonates with somebody else, and then it's like a domino effect. As a young man, and when you are at the peak of your career, Often there is that perception, you've got to be bulletproof. How easy is it to actually show weakness? Uh, yeah, well, you're brought up to not show it and certainly playing at the elite level, um, you're not to show any weakness. It's, uh, you, one, you've got your ego, but also it's to, to not show the opposition any weakness in, in, in yourself. And I think that feeds a lot of, um, you know, not a healthy mindset around when you finish sport because I played sport when I had to be the man and I had to front up and, you know, nothing's wrong with me, I'm bulletproof and, and that's who I am. And, you know, I did that for the bonds of 20 years and uh, it wasn't great for me because I'd get out of the football club and I'd get into the car and I'd get home and I'd go, oh, thank God. And I was very, very good at masking and I still am. It's just something that I'm, I'm continuing to work on. That even as much as this morning, I wasn't feeling great this morning. Waking up I was like, oh, do I have to go down and do this? OK, I'll front up and I'll put on a mask, you know, but you know, I came down this morning here and I said to the group, God, I wasn't feeling great. And my me just saying that 
I actually f felt a weight coming off my shoulders. But as a footballer in a football and lead environment, I never had the opportunity to say that because I was thought it's not good for you. You're not showing op opposition any weakness whatsoever in who you are as a footballer. Two more, boys, two more. Do you think that most of us in life, or obviously particularly men, that we, we come with this sort of perception, this body armour, and it's hard to then take it off? We've been conditioned for our fathers were the same, so Tag and I share the same. Uh, we both come from Ireland, but both of our fathers were our heroes, you know? Yeah. But our fathers aren't our role models either. Uh, so both of our fathers have passed now, and they're our absolute heroes. They were the pillars of the community back home, but they could never share their emotions with us. They were never really hands-on as fathers either. So I think we've been conditioned in the past and we're trying to break that for the future. So, so what we'll do is we'll do three burpees to start. Down to the water, just get under the water, come back up, okay? If you can go for four or five, go for four or five. Or if you want to walk up and down, walk up and down, okay? So set yourself for This is generation we've got to understand. For a long, long time, men have been told, you know, to suck it up, you know, the breadwinner and all this crap that you have to and you can't show your, your emotions and your feelings and the more we reward it in society the better it's going to be for everyone. The, the concerning bit for me with mental health is there's not a whole lot going on in the coal face that's free and it's available for anyone in the country to come and do and that's why the part of it we're always very conscious and David around having it be free come down it doesn't matter it doesn't discriminate mental health doesn't discriminate whether sure doesn't. you're a CEO or you're whatever you are it doesn't so and that's very much part of WNO.